Hello everyone, happy Tuesday and welcome to story time. Our first book for today is called Dear Librarian and is written by Lydia M. Sigworth, illustrated by Romana Galata. Oh, how cute. Look at that. Dear Librarian, may I tell you a story? It's about me and it's about you and it's about my library home. It happened when I was five years old. Me and my mom and my dad and my five big sisters and one baby brother all had to leave Colorado and go to Iowa where grandma was. My dad needed a new job and we needed a new place to live. In Iowa, I missed my little blue home with the big maple tree. I missed my red roller skates packed away in the big truck. I missed my sunny backyard with lots of space to run and play. I missed my best friend, little Becca. But most of all, I missed having a home. In Iowa, I didn't have a home to live in, just houses. Five big sisters and one baby brother and a mom and a dad are a lot of people. So we lived in a lot of different places. Some days we lived at Aunt Linda's house. Aunt Linda had a pretty pink bathtub for fancy bubble baths. But Aunt Linda's house was full of nice things. Nice things you shouldn't touch because they aren't yours. Some days we lived at Cousin Alice's house. Cousin Alice had her own family to take care of, but she let us sleep in her tiny cozy basement. In Cousin Alice's basement, there was a big couch and bouncy mattresses. Every night was a giant sister sleepover. But even a snuggly sleepover was a little too crowded for all of us. Some days we stayed at grandma's house. Grandma lived right by a park with swings and space to run and spin, but there weren't any friends at grandma's park. Mom said it was very generous of everyone to let us live at their houses, but grandma's house was too small, Aunt Linda's house was too nice, and cousin Alice's house already had a family. Nowhere was home, nowhere had a special spot just for me. Then one day, mom took me and my five big sisters and one baby brother to a new place. Not a house, but a big building with some stone columns and tall, tall steps. The library. There was a sunny window that took up a whole wall. There were rows and rows of books and baskets of toys and a puppet theater. There was so much to do and so much space to do it in. At the window, I could watch people on the street or I could skip down the rows of books with my brother or I could make up stories with my sisters. There was enough space at the library for all of us. Then I found a special spot just for me. Up the tall stairs across from the sunny window was a round desk. It was my favorite spot because... Behind that desk was my new friend. She had kind, gentle eyes, a gentle face, and a laugh like bubbles. That friend was the librarian, and that librarian was you. You looked me right in the eyes and listened to me like I was a grown up. You helped me find a book about princesses and then you sat down on the floor and read it to me. After that, mom and dad brought me to the library all the time. Every day you gave me a hug. Every day you made me feel safe and happy. Those days, the library was like a home, my own special home 
even though it wasn't a house. Later that year, my mom and dad and my five big sisters and one baby brother all went to live in a big brown home with a tall willow tree. I could zoom around in my red roller skates again. But I still visited my library home to be in my favorite spot and read books and to be home with you, my library friend. Now, my dear librarian, I am a grown up, but I still go to the library every day because I'm a librarian just like you. You gave me a library home, so I wanted to make one too for kids with little blue homes and big brown homes and no homes at all. So I did. The end. I loved that book. That was really good. Our next book is called I, I Gets Lucky, written by Terry Tatchell and illustrated by Ivan Sol Solima. Solima. I, I was a lemur who had to duck and hide whenever all the people woke and filled the land outside. Because he caused some trouble, they wouldn't soon forget. See, I, I love to pull pranks with almost no regret. He used his creepy hand to scare the young ones and the old. They saw it as a monstrous beast, horrific to behold. He'd skulk around and wait for them to settle down to eat, then slip his creepy hand up close beside them on their seat. And oh my, how it pleased him to see those people squeal. And as a bonus, bonus more than not, they'd huck their yummy meal right at him in his face or mouth. He didn't even care. See, I, I loved good people food, his payment for their scare. But then one day he went too far. Some people called him lout, said he was evil and bad luck, and then they cast him out. The word spread far that he was bad, unlucky to behold. A law was passed to keep him out and fearful tales were told. He had no choice. He had to hide and spend long days alone. I miss the people and their food, I, I would softly moan. So I, I set to thinking to make himself a plan to win the hearts and trust again of villagers and clan. But all that he could think of were pranks and nasty stuff to make them scared or jumpy and his hand that made it tough. It's not my fault I'm born that way to think, I think that they are rude to banish me and never share their very yummy food. So I, I felt a little mad and vowed to run away. He'd find new friends who liked his jokes and wanted him to stay. But as he went, a monster swooped. It came without a sound. He was so scared he wet himself and pooped upon the ground. The monster stopped and said, hello, a flying fox was she. I mean no harm to you. In fact, I'm here to help, you see. I do not see the eye I screamed. Why would you scare me so? That wasn't nice to feel such fright. I think you should go. The flying fox just smiled at him. She really meant to help. I pulled a prank on you tonight so you would scream and yelp and see just how those people feel. You scared them to their core and took delight in their spilt food and ate it off the floor. Pulling pranks can be such fun until you really see the way it feels to be so scared as dreadful as can be. The eye eye stepped away from her but mostly off the poop. I do see now, I made them sad, I jumped through any hoop. If I could only find a way to have them as my friends, but there's a law that I'm bad luck, too late to make amends. 
My hand, it means they're scared of me, no matter what I try. It's terrible to look at and sometimes it makes them cry. The flying fox held up her paw and it looked almost the same. The eye I jumped, he was surprised and felt a little lame. I thought I was the only one who had a creepy hand. Are you also feared and banished forever from their land? I'm not because I make a point to make their lives ideal. I eat mosquitoes from the air. They're quite a tasty meal. I keep people safe from danger. Mosquitoes bring disease and make them really sick or itchy. Really, it's a breeze. So find a way to help them even use your creepy paw. Spread good luck and happiness. They'll change their bad luck law. The eye I said his thank yous and turned to face his fears. He'd find some way to win their love. Should he resort to tears? No, no, not tears. It needs to be a nice thing that I do that makes them feel some happiness. He knew his words were true. He waited in the bushes and watched them for a month. Then suddenly he saw his chance to save a baby's lunch. Her mother wasn't watching as she threw food around and most of it had rolled beneath a boulder on the ground. He ran up fast and smiled at her. I'm here to help, don't shout, and used his long finger, longest fingertip to get those food bits out. He then placed them on the plate for her. She smiled in gratitude, then held his ghastly finger tight and even shared her food. That mother, she came running and screamed in deadly fear. She knew it was a scary thing to have an eye-eye near. But then she saw her daughter who held his hand so tight and I eyes face was filled with love. This law just can't be right. I I could only mean good luck. His love is crystal clear. So that mother stopped the people as they ran and gathered near. One look and they could also see the error in their ways. From that day on, they made a law that I I always stays. The end. So this animal, the I I is an endangered and misunderstood animal. So I thought it would be nice to um, share a story about him today because you don't really hear about these animals much. So I will see you guys on Thursday. I hope you have a really great week. Bye.